Scott Lang's new book, Look Out for the Little Guy, is finally here. You know, the tie-in to that beloved Ant-Man film that came out eight months ago. <laughs> Great timing on this one, guys. Cross-media synchronicity at its finest. So I was entirely planning to review this book as if I existed within the MCU, and I was finally learning about what really transpired during that battle with Thanos. But I got about halfway through and decided that would be so much more work than this book was worth. I ended up tweeting out, this book's kinda bad, and that blew up. It received over 8,000 likes and over 640,000 views, which is a lot for me on that platform, and I kinda regret that it got seen by as many people as it did. I didn't mean to affect any sales on that book, and I feel like I probably might have swayed a few people away from buying it. In fact, some of the best chapters and most heartfelt passages aren't until the second half of the book, and I am glad that I actually finished it. But there were a bunch of red flags for me as soon as I picked up the book, which soured my overall experience. First things first, it is tiny. It looks like only half the book we get to see from both the film itself and the trailer for the book, which feels like I'm not actually getting what I was promised. On top of that, there's no audiobook option, which feels like a no-brainer to me, considering the trailer also features Paul Rudd pretending to read the audiobook, and he listens to that audiobook in the film, so there's huge wasted potential there. The book may be small, but the words are big and the margins are even bigger. You're gonna rip through this thing really fast. I don't think I've ever complained about the price of a novel before, because I generally get some level of enjoyment that does eventually validate its price tag. But this book is small. The margins are huge, the font is big, and there's enough blank pages and random pictures inside this thing to make room for a whole other chapter. This book wasn't marketed as a young adult book, but it heavily reads like a young adult or even middle grade novel, and it's printed in the standard YA binding. So let's compare some prices from other Disney-owned franchise tie-in books to see if this is at all worth it. Star Wars, Quest for the Hidden City, an excellent middle grade novel by George Mann, and the price? $14.99. Frozen 2, Dangerous Secrets by Mary Mancusi, the best tie-in book in the entire Frozen franchise, and the price? $17.99. Leia, Princess of Alderaan, some of Claudia Gray's best work in the galaxy far, far away. $17.99. Thanos, Titan Consumed, a fun read for a book that was originally intended to be a canon MCU book, until it wasn't. $17.99. That's the standard price for Disney YA books. I can keep going. Avatar, The Last Airbender, The Legacy of Yang Chen. This is not a Disney-owned property, but the cost? $19.99. Well worth the price tag. You get the picture. Now, let's see how much Scott Lang's new book, Look Out for the Little Guy, costs. $26.99? Almost $10 more expensive than the other books I just mentioned, and roughly half the page count. The whole point of looking out for the little guy, from Scott's perspective, was that he felt people were being lied to and stolen from by his former employer. Well, Scott, I feel like this book is theft. You're charging the little guy way too much for way too little. In my opinion, for this book to validate its price point, it needed to do two things. One, it needed to accurately relay the events in Infinity War and Endgame to the in-universe MCU populace, as this was how most of them learned the truth about what happened with Thanos. And two, this book needed to introduce new information to us in some form, fleshing out what happens behind the scenes. It fails on both counts. The most exciting new information we receive about the interpersonal relationships in the MCU throughout the entire book happens in the first chapter, when Bruce Banner and Clint Barton ask Scott to write this book to help people understand what really happened with Thanos. There's also a short but very good chapter in the middle that details Steve Rogers and Natasha Romanoff telling Scott all about what happened in the five years he was in the Quantum Realm. And that's about it for new information. One thing I don't like about the MCU is that it seems like the characters don't ever fight any battles or go on any adventures off screen, like we see happens between the Spider-Verse films. So I was hoping this book would detail some of that kind of stuff. Nope. So obviously my love of tie-in fiction filling in the gaps was absolutely not sated by this read. So I tried to appreciate it as if I were a person living in the MCU and he was telling me the Avengers story. 
While you can pick up the general picture of what happens as it details major moments from several films, the writing is all over the place, and I can't help but feel people in-universe would get so confused and frustrated by this narration. I'll put it to you this way. Scott spends as much time describing what it felt like to be turned into a baby as he does the Battle for Earth. For those of you who follow my timeline coverage of the MCU, there doesn't appear to be any new information that changes how we perceive Scott's placement on the timeline. It does mention that he was under house arrest for 24 months, but we already knew that. Where this book does shine is that it gets to the heart of who Scott Lang is, his emotional core, the people he loves in his life, and it details many of the hard lessons he's learned along the way. If you go in looking for a feel-good memoir, this might scratch that itch for you. But at $26.99, this does not do it for me. Now I really gotta get back to editing my Spider-Verse timeline for you guys. This video is going to not only change the way you see the Spider-Verse timeline, but how it's connected into the MCU and vice versa. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed this little rant. If you did, please be sure to like this video and subscribe for more. You can pick up a copy of Look Out for the Little Guy in the description if you want to, but I certainly don't recommend it. Thanks guys, long live the timeline. <laughs>